opens with their brand new song, The Wild Flowers. Now this is the third single we've gotten that's sort of been the John the Baptist, the Sorceress's Jesus Christ. Uh, this is the final track I'm going to be covering prior to the album's release next week, which I know for some of you, release day has already come because there is a leak out there. Have you heard the leak, Cover Killer Nation? I know it exists, but I don't cover leaks. I, I just don't. That's not something that I've done for a very, very long time. We'll be talking about this album next week right around release day because I'm an adult and I enjoy respect a little bit. But let's talk about The Wildflowers because this is an interesting cut. It's the longest cut that we've gotten thus far of the three at nearly seven minutes in length. And it's one that really pulls some of the resources from the two songs that we have heard prior, Sorceress and Will of the Wisp. We do have softer elements, more beautiful moments similar to Wisp, and we have some of those harder uh, moments that you heard within Sorceress. And the combined effort leads to the seven minute cut. That's really a tale of almost two or three sides. It's almost like a three act chorus in my opinion, considering we have three different role, um, uh, I guess, portions to this triptych. The first one is what you hear right whenever the song gets started, that sort of stop start uh, musical idea in the background painted very majestically by Mike's lyricism for this really kind of building up some themology and then we get our main chorus and this is one that I find to be out of all of the three cuts uh, the most catchy but also one of the more, more powerful ones considering I like how the music swirls around it it delivers it with a strong gusto and Mike's confidence level on this is through the absolute sky his vocals are fantastic and really is able to drive this point home and make it very memorable. And that's, that's one thing that I think Sorceress and Will of the Wisp maybe had in spurts, but right here, during that whole entire line, he's been delivering a memorable, memorable moment. It's something where that, uh, that overall vocal performance sort of makes your hair stand up on end a little bit. Mike has that sort of power with his vocals, but the... Whenever we get through this, we get a heck of a decent solo to go along with it. And then we enter into the third portion of this triptych, which is actually, uh, whenever you consider it, maybe the longest portion, which is uh, the point directly after we hear a repetition of the chorus about four to four and a half minutes in. That lasts till the re uh, remaining duration of the song. And it's a softer element, it's a softer moment. It's almost like bre uh, breathing into the cosmic air as opposed to being right here on Earth with the rest of us losers. Uh, it's very spacey, it's one that is uh, not very dense whatsoever, kind of light and sort of paints this sort of atmospheric, this sort of uh, very, uh, as I said, airy uh, picture to it. And you hear some soft vocals in the background from Mike that eventually build and build and build until we just go into a, an absolute cavalcade a, a, of sound really to complete this track, the last 30 seconds, really building and, and popping. Uh, that's something that makes this song truly unique. It's got sort of that double-sided Jekyll and Hyde uh, real representation to it. And we get that in a way that is very presentable. And also, the songwriting makes sense on it. The only thing about uh, that softer element is that it does seem to kill some of the momentum that's been built by the first four minutes of this song. But overall, it doesn't take enough of it away that it becomes an absolute track killer, principally because it all builds into something once this song is concluded. If it would have just stayed within this sort of soft and kind of tame location until the duration closed, then we could talk about how that was an opportunity missed. But instead, it made a lot of songwriting sense for Mike and the boys to do what they did to finish off the wildflowers. I don't know what you guys think about this song. I really enjoy it. They're three out of three in my opinion. Uh, this may actually end up being stronger than Pale Communion. Once again, I know some of you guys know. Uh, don't tell me, although that just basically means that you will, you sack of morons. Let me know what you think about this song. Are you excited about Sorceress? My name is Cover Killer Nation. I'll talk to you later.